your things are thrown into a box. Your loved ones, who happen to be of mixed immigration status, are forced onto the streets. Now you don't have a roof over your head and you're homeless. We're gathered here to support our friends and family of mixed immigration status, but more than that, we're here to negate the myth of housing being a luxury and to elevate housing as a human right. My name is Charlie Peppers, and thank you for gathering here today. All right. So before we go into the meat of this conference, I wanted to thank you, everybody, for coming here. Thank you, Council Member Mike Bonin, Council President Herb Wesson, Council Member Joe Boscaino, Council Member Paul Koretz, Council Member David Rue, Council Member Bob Blumenfield, Council Member Nuri Martinez, Peter Lynn from Lassa, Doug Guthrie, the CEO of Hakla, also LA Voice, Ask Me, Local 143, and everyone in. Thank you. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Father Brendan from the Dolores Mission to the podium. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Father Brendan. I'm Associate Pastor at Dolores Mission in Boyle Heights, adjacent to the Pico Gardens Public Housing Project, and member of the Interfaith Community Organizing Network, LA Voice, part of Pico, California. And we're here today to ask for your undivided attention so that our communities and families will no longer be terrorized and torn apart. We're here to stand in an uncompromising way on a non-negotiable moral principle that we belong to one another and that the longest standing criteria for moral behavior is how we treat the most vulnerable among us, how we treat the wor worker, the migrant, and the family. Our My Catholic Christian narrative begins with a vulnerable and displaced family. A young mother, Mary, a displaced father, Joseph, and a homeless child, Jesus, we call that family the Holy Family because they remind us that holiness has something to do with wholeness, that our goodness has something to do with our togetherness, and there is for us no such thing as a mixed family. There is no eligibility requirement for human dignity. There is for us no question about who will be affected by this proposal, this proposed rule change, because we are all affected by it, because we believe in the sacredness of family, the primacy of human dignity. We recognize to put one person out of their home is to disrupt and displace everyone. We are all affected by the moral corrosion of hate-filled and discriminatory policies like this proposed rule change. There are moments in politics for negotiation and compromise, but there are moments when you are called to stand in an uncompromising way on foundational moral principles, and this is one of those moments. The moral perspective of the religious community is clear. We have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a fundamental responsibility to welcome, to protect, and to promote the most vulnerable among us, the so-called stranger in our midst. Sacred scripture tells us we must love our neighbors as ourselves because they are, by God, our sisters and brothers, our mothers and fathers, our sons and daughters. We are bound to them in kinship. We must be bound to them in justice and love. We reject this proposed rule change because it's little more than another cruel and hateful tip of the racist and fear-filled iceberg in the cold heart of this administration. Everyone before you today represents a thousand more, and we stand together in solidarity against any idea that we can be justly divided or evicted or displaced. The moral imperative here is clear. Stop terrorizing our children. Stop separating our families. Stop the massacre of innocents. And remember that all families are holy, mixed or unmixed, documented or undocumented, immigrant or indigenous. We belong to each other. And to deny this truth, to adopt this proposed rule change, is simply to tear ourselves apart. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father. Next up, we have Council Member 
Herb Wesson. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, just Monday, I had a dinner with some of my friends from Central America, and I just want to quickly uh, share with you some of the things that we talked about. We talked about this past weekend and the fear of massive uh, raids by ICE throughout this nation and Los Angeles in particular. And one of my friends talked about from um, El Salvador, he was going to get some toys to send to El Salvador. And he gets to the place and he talks to the owner and the owner says that uh, less than 60% of his customers have turned out on that day, but yet he still had to pay for the workers that were there. Another friend owns a restaurant and talked about how nobody was there all day. Another friend talked about uh, that they provide health services and medication for high blood pressure and, and diabetes and a variety of, of illnesses and individuals are disenrolling, unenrolling because they don't want to have their names in a document where they could be tracked. People, this is insanity. That reports of possible uh, locations where ICE were randomly stopping people on, on, on the street and of course these reports weren't accurate and people were avoiding them. People were staying in their homes. And now what we're talking about today is just torture. I come from a people where our families were ripped apart where you could come home from working in the field and your wife would be gone and you would never see her again. That still adversely affects individuals of the African American community to this very day. We cannot sit back and idly allow this to happen. A family of four. A fam what is somebody's 83-year-old grandmother? Is she a threat to the United States of America? Or somebody's uncle who, who's disabled and been here forever but just never got the proper status? Is that a threat to this country? I say to you that this is so insane that this is like a weird movie that sucks. It is that unbelievable. And I think that it is very important for each and every one of us to ensure that we talk about this because I will share this with you and trust me it is true. There are people that do not get on social media. There are people that don't watch the news. There are people that don't read the newspaper. There are people that don't know the extent of what's going on. What is going on right now with all of these psychological things? You know what that is? That is torture. And that is something that each and every one of us should be against. So I urge everybody to, to speak out to go to, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, www.keepfamiliestogether.org and state your case. Talk to your neighbors. Talk to your friends. Get on social media. What we have to do is create a real diverse group of voices that speak out against this. I am so happy to be here today. I am so proud of all of the people that stand with me today and to let you know that this is not what the United States of America is all about, that we are the United States of America. And it is important that we fight to protect this dream, this idea that is the United States of America, where you come here, you work your guts out, you catch a break, and you can change your lot in life and the lot of your family. 
So anyway, I'm proud to just stand together with you, all of you, in solidarity today. Thank you. And I'm just going to reiterate, if you can go to the website, go to the website and leave a comment. That would be so helpful. Let your voice be heard on this issue because it's real and it's going to impact a lot of people if it goes through. All right. Next up, we have Council Member Nuri Martinez. Thank you very much. ¿Hay prensa en español? Sí. ¿Dónde están? Okay. Uh, voy a decir un po un, mis palabras en español, and then I, I, I guess I can repeat it in English, but I want to make sure I get this in Spanish. Soy la concejal Nuri Martínez y represento el Distrito 6 en el Valle de San Fernando. Desafortunadamente estamos aquí otra vez peleando en contra de racismo de la administración Trump, donde cada día vemos a niños en jaulas, a niños separados de sus mamás, que no nomás los separan, pero ahora no pueden ni proveer jabón ni ni los alimentos para poder sostener a estos niños. Ahora la administración Trump quiere atacar a nuestras familias que viven en nuestras viviendas. Como una madre, yo no puedo ni siquiera imaginarme la posibilidad de traer, tratar de proveer vivienda para mi familia. Y ahora simplemente con una regla de esta administración, pues estas familias podían quedar en la calle. Eso es lo que significa esta propuesta de ley, que nuestras familias van a ser botadas a la calle, no nomás en la frontera donde están separando a los niños de nuestras familias, pero ahora en las viviendas de aquí de Los Ángeles, más de 11 mil personas van a ser afectadas bajo esta regla. Tenemos que hacer todo lo posible para seguir peleando en contra de racismo y en contra de los ataques inmigrantes de esta administración. Todos podemos hacer nuestro uh, garito de arena. Podemos ir a la página web para poder dejar nuestro comentario sobre la crueldad que significa de esta propuesta. Esto es simplemente cruel. Las personas tienen vivienda, están tratando de afigurar su estatus uh, migratorio y simplemente porque no tienen los papeles necesarios van a ser votados de sus viviendas. Ustedes ven todos los días en la ciudad de Los Ángeles la crisis que tenemos con las personas viviendo en la calle. ¿Se imaginan? agregando a ese problema con las personas que ahorita tienen la vivienda, pero simplemente tienen ese inmigratorio estatus que no está resolvido. Lo que quiero decir es, soy hija de inmigrantes. Mi papá fue deportado tres veces antes de que yo naciera. Mi mamá estaba dando a luz cuando mi papá lo deportaron por tercera vez. Yo sé lo que significa la deportación para la comunidad inmigratoria, inmigrante, Y tenemos que hacer todo lo posible aquí en Los Ángeles para evitar que nuestras familias sigan haciendo cruelmente deportadas y atacadas por esta administración. Quiero darle las gracias a los miembros del concilio, al, al concejal Mike Bonin, que conmigo introdució la resolución para oponernos a esta regla en mayo. So, estamos tratando de, uh, de hacer todo lo posible. Y la, y la, la comunidad de Los Ángeles está con la, nuestra comunidad inmigrante. I just want to say a few words before I hand it over. You know, this is simply cruelty. There is no other way to describe what is happening in our country. Over the weekend, you saw pictures and videos of children that are being torn away from their families. As a mom, I cannot even imagine a day that goes by not knowing where my kid is at. Not only are you tearing families apart, you're putting them in cages and you're, they're not even dignified enough to give these kids the basic needs to be able to function. You're not providing them with proper health care and proper sanitary conditions in these cages. What are we doing? I want to thank Councilmember Bonin for co-presenting the resolution to oppose this rule change. There is nothing else that is more important for families in Los Angeles, but to keep them together and maintain that, make sure that they don't get evicted by a simple immigration status that they have not been able to fulfill the requirements to be able to stay in this country. We need to do more, we must do more, and as a city council, we stand together with the immigrants of the city of Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that. All right, next up, we have Council Member Bonin. Thank you. 
Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you to all my colleagues and, and everybody who's here. Thank you especially to, to Nuri Martinez, who co-presented this motion with me. Before she is a, a council member, Nuri is a mom. Uh, and before I'm a council member, I'm a dad. And like Nuri, when people try to attack families or separate children from their families, our blood boils. And we need to stand up. I represent the West Side. So a lot of folks in this building think of me as the guy who represents Brentwood or Pacific Palisades, and that's true. But I also represent the underpaid immigrant workers who work in the shadows of the planes that fly to and from Los Angeles International Airport. I also represent the thriving and vital Oaxacan community on the west side, particularly in West LA and in Venice. And I also represent the community of Del Rey, the area near Culver and Slauson, and Mar Vista Gardens, the housing complex, with lots of mixed families. In the days after Trump was elected and sworn in, I sat and spoke with those families. In the days last summer, leading up to the arrest of a number of people who are here today and myself down the street objecting to the, the child separation policy at the border, which still goes on, I sat with those families. And just a week or two ago, I sat in the living room with those families again, talking about their objections and how to appeal and object to this horrible policy coming out of HUD. People are in fear, legitimate fear, and whether the Trump administration is saying they are going to do raids on a given weekend or whether they're saying they're not, they're deliberately trying to scare people. And that is, as Mr. Wesson said, torture. That is also state-sponsored terrorism. It is nothing short of state-sponsored terrorism. And here in Los Angeles, we say hell no to that. Not only is this policy cruel, this is absolutely stupid and counterproductive. If you are one of those in Los Angeles, left or right, who has been outraged at the increase in homelessness in Los Angeles, you must oppose this policy. If this policy is implemented, 11,000 more people will be on the streets in Los Angeles. That cannot, that cannot stand. A few years ago in Sacramento, they were talking about some very important LGBT legislation. And Mr. Weston got up and said to Sheila Kuehl, Sheila, this isn't just your fight. This is our fight, too. This is everyone's fight in Los Angeles. When I was marching in protest of the statewide proposition that took away my marriage rights 10 years ago, I was marching alongside immigrant workers, straight workers from Unite Here. And they were marching with the LGBTQ community because they knew what we all know, that if there is injustice somewhere, there is injustice everywhere. So our message today is that we are standing with you, hand in hand and arm in arm. We are together, Los Angeles, in saying no to this and saying that everybody, every family must stay united and must be protected. Thank you. Next up, we have council member Bruce Cayeno. Thank you and good morning. Let me first uh, recognize uh, the leadership behind me, Council President Wesson and um, our mem two members who introduced this uh, motion against this HUD rule. As you heard from them, Nuri Martinez and Mike Bond, and I am just truly blessed and honored to work alongside each and every one of you so today we stand together as Angelinos in opposition to this proposed HUD rule that will make, as you heard from Mike, 11,000 Angelinos homeless. And the only reason to HUD would change its rule is to cause havoc to our city. And today is our call to action as a country. This new HUD rule will create unnecessary damage. It's scaring American school children who are worried about their breakup of their family and the loss of their grandmother. It would also send thousands into homelessness in a city that is already drowning in homelessness. And the way we solve this problem 
as we've talked about for many, many years, is comprehensive immigration reform because we know that immigration has a positive effect in our city, in our state, and throughout our country. And why then does it seem that we're so committed to fighting immigration? My parents immigrated from Italy legally, but that simply is not an option to too many people. We must make legal immigration a better option. In my district, in Council District 15, I have the highest number of public housing units, and this alone will affect 3,000 families in Watts, San Pedro, and Wilmington. We cannot let this happen. Now, I want to remind everyone that just a year ago, the FCC took comments on the net neutrality rule, and John Oliver on Last Week Tonight helped crash the FCC comment system. Now, today, we need a John Oliver moment in the city of Los Angeles and throughout this country. We need to make our voices heard. Let's get so many comments that we crash that system. Go to www.keepfamiliestogether.org. We have 14 days left, and let HUD know that you do not want to see 11,000 more families in Los Angeles on our streets. And let HUD know that this clearly is unacceptable. Thank you. Next up, we have Council Member Rue. Thank you so very much and good morning. And I really want to thank the people of power who organized this call to action. And to everyone who is here today to take a stand against this horrible policy proposed by HUD. We are in a crisis of homelessness. It is the single greatest crisis of our time, a crisis that is felt deeply here in Los Angeles, but it's happening all across our nation as rents continue to climb and the gap between the haves and the have-nots continue to widen. This is a crisis that demands all of our best efforts. And what does this administration do? It kicks out 50,000 children into the streets. This policy is breathtaking in its cruelty. And what we have heard already today is more than enough to, to tell you why this policy must stop and this rule must be changed. But I just want to add a little bit more facts. 25,000 families could lose their home when this policy gets enacted. More than 100,000 people could get evicted. And 11,000 people could be kicked out of their homes in Los Angeles alone. As an immigrant, one of two immigrants on the Los Angeles City Council who grew up in, Los, in a Los Angeles in a low-income neighborhood, I can promise you, that this rule would be devastating. This would force immigrant families to choose between staying together or staying in their homes. Let's be very clear, this is not housing policy. This is family separation policy. And HUD itself admits that no positive effect would happen to the department while evicting thousands of families. This is not good policy. This is not about helping working families. This is cruelty for cruelty's sake, and it must be stopped. So what are we going to do? We're going to stand together and speak up. And it's been mentioned several times before, but you have till July 9th to make sure your voices are heard. Send your public comments at www.keepfamiliestogether.org. So let's stand together and speak up. Thank you. Next up, we have Council Member Coretz. At the Statue of Liberty, there's a bronze plaque of Emmeret Lazarus's poem, The New Colossus, that reads, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore, send these the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. And if it was left to Trump to write the last line of that stanza, it would end, 
and I will separate children from families, torture them, and kick them out the door. And the idea that ejecting people from their homes, families, children, the elderly, families that would under this rule lose all of their housing aid is the kind of inhumane cruelty that we must stand up together and say no to. We will not force families out of their homes, no matter their country of origin, no matter the language they speak, no matter their current documentation. This administration has already marked itself as the arbiters of the cruelest kind of inhumanity. Families across our city fear living in the daylight due to the threat of being forcibly removed from their homes. If my father was alive, I would ask him if this feels any different than the early 1930s in Germany. He lived through it. Um, it was so bad that he couldn't talk about it, but I know that his family lived in constant th fear during that entire decade. This isn't any different. We can't allow this kind of humanity, and we can't allow it to go on under our watch. Please go to keepfamiliestogether.org to oppose this barbaric policy, a policy that is weaponizing the very departments whose jobs are to protect the most vulnerable. We can't let the lunatic in the White House continue to split up families, separate children from parents, allowing them unconscionable physical and mental torture, all in the name of deportation and so-called safe borders. This must be stopped. We're here to do that and it starts today. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Peter Lin with Lhasa. Good morning. This policy change represents a departure from many federal administrations, conservative, centrist, liberal, that have held the idea that citizen children can be housed in federal housing, even if they're a member of a household that is of mixed immigrant status and documentation status, while the federal subsidy is cut for the people who are not eligible. That's a policy that has stood the test of many administrations, conservative, liberal. The focus of this administration has nothing to do with immigrant status. It has everything to do with white supremacy. And what Mike Bonin said is absolutely true. This program is focused on terrorizing American households and those of immigrant status and those of undocumented status. It is state-sponsored terrorism. We cannot allow this to persist and to expand in the United States. We must fight it with every means capable. And putting your vote at keepfamiliestogether.org right now is one step. This is a broad effort to attack fundamental human rights and fundamental American civil rights. We cannot allow it to spread. Thank you. Sincerest apologies. We have another council member here, council member Bob Blumenfeld. Great, thank you. Well, you've heard it. I mean, this is a ridiculous and cruel policy. So I'm here and I represent the West San Fernando Valley, so I'm sorry it took me a little longer to get here in the morning, <laughs> hour and a half drive, but I wanted to be here uh, to stand in solidarity. And I stand in solidarity with my colleagues, Ms. Martinez and Mr. Bonin, who brought this forward, my other colleagues who are speaking out against this, to all of you who realize the ridiculousness of this policy. I stand in solidarity with parents everywhere who understand that families need to be kept together I stand in sol solidarity with anyone who has any shred of decency and sees that this kind of policy cannot stand. I stand in solidarity with anyone who has any sense of logic and understands that a policy like this is not only cruel, but it is stupid financially. I st stand in solidarity with all good people, 
who want to make a positive difference. And I, I am just, I, I'm shocked. I guess I, I'm ashamed of what this president is doing. I'm not shocked by it because we have seen this kind of cruelty time and time again from we talked about putting children in cages. I mean, the thought about this and what it would do to our, we have a homelessness crisis here, taking all these people and putting them on the street, exacerbating our homeless policy, our homeless crisis. And we know that this is, this is something he's tried to do. This president, his last two budget requests, has tried to completely eliminate the CDBG program, cutting out all housing funds. He's been cruel and unusual to, to, to immigrants who are part of the engine that grows this country. So I'm fed up. I'm fed up with what this White House is doing. Uh, I'm fed up with these kind of policies. I stand in solidarity with all of you here today, and we are going to, we, we are going to be in solidarity. We're going to speak up. We're going we're gonna to move forward. We're going to stop this policy, and we're going to get this maniac out of the White House. Thank you. Next up, we have Doug Guthrie, the CEO of Hackla. Well, thank you so much, and uh, thank you so much for organizing uh, this very important rally today. Uh, HACLA is charged with implementing uh, these types of rules, and let me just uh, outright state this proposed rule change is outrageous. Uh, it's absolutely outrageous. I think uh, I, I agree with everything that's been said uh, so far. Uh, it needs to be clear that uh, although HUD is responsible for the proposed rule change, this is coming out of the White House. Uh, make no mistake about it. Uh, HUD's own staff, when they wrote this up, said this doesn't make any sense. It's going to harm children in particular. It's going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars to house fewer people. Now, now what sort of sense does that make? I need to be clear that these mixed status households have played by the rules. They've done nothing wrong. Uh, this policy is uh, based on a statute going back to the early 1980s. Uh, this rule has been in place since 1994. There's not one dollar of federal funding uh, that is supporting an undocumented resident. They pay higher rents and subsidized housing than anyone else because their rents are prorated. Uh, this policy makes absolutely no sense. It's cold hearted. Uh, it's it's despicable, uh, uh, and it's uh, and it's very intentional. Uh, this isn't just trying to find more efficiencies in a federal program. Uh, this is intentionally targeting the immigrant uh, community in the most mean-spirited way possible, uh, and we cannot let this stand. Los Angeles has impacted more than any other community in the United States, uh, in particular our public housing communities uh, throughout this city where we have uh, populations where nearly one-third of the residents in many of these uh, uh, larger-scale housing developments uh, live in mixed-status households. The majority of the people that could end up losing their housing here are children. We can't let that happen. Uh, and I know from Hackless' standpoint, uh, uh, we will do whatever we can do uh, locally, uh, nationally. Uh, you know, we're prepared to take a leadership role on this. Uh, we're, to, we're prepared to take uh, whatever legal steps are necessary. Uh, but we must stop this rule from going forward. Uh, and we need to see some changes out in Washington, D.C. So thank you for organizing this. Uh, please make your comments heard. It's very, very important that you do that. So thank you very much. Thank you. So we have a lot of council members who've joined us, and we thank you so much for their time. If you have to get back to council, if you had to go back to work, now is the time to do it. Thank you so much for joining us.